So there you are, about to go out, looking at yourself in the mirror, but something is missing from your outfit. The hair's on point, the shirt is looking good, but your neck is bare. So let's throw on a necklace, but which one? Option one, a close fitted Cuban link silver chain. Option two, a gold cross on a thin gold chain. Option three, a pair of dog tags with a simple metal chain, or maybe a simple bronze knit chain with a Nordic symbol, AKA pendant. Heck, maybe you wanna go full on pimp and wear this. So which of those options were right? Which ones were wrong? Well, sorry gents, it's a bit of a trick question, because the answer depends on you and your personal style. But seriously, gents, there are so many ways to wear a necklace with style. Now, gents, I'll admit, I've got a pretty conservative style. And over the last decade, I've not really recommended most men pulling off or wearing necklaces. But I was having a meeting the other day with my friend, Greg Brzezinski. And in that meeting, he was wearing a monochromatic look, had this really nice shirt matching with the jacket. And he wore this silver chain. It was silver, it was strong, it was bold, and it really complemented his look. The point being is that wearing a necklace can be an integral part of your style and identity. In fact, human beings have been wearing necklaces for a long time. You go back 5,000 years, the Egyptians adorned themselves with all different types of necklaces. These ancient necklaces, whether they were shell or gold, were often believed to ward off bad spirits, and in the case of the Egyptians, could also show status and power. In fact, that's a great transition to talk about why would a man wear a necklace? Well, one of the first reasons is to show status and power. Now, in today's day and age, especially in the Western world, it doesn't have the same effect. But there was a time throughout human history, and we see this across cultures. An example being the Mara Empire out of India from 300 to 100 BC. Elaborate jewelry and necklaces not only had a spiritual meaning, but it also showed status in society. Now, with the ancient Romans, as many of you guys know, it wasn't a normal part of male attire. But still, there were many recorded instances of high-ranking military officials receiving what was known as a torque. And yes, I know a lot of you history buffs know that this was actually a practice stolen from the Celts. And jumping over to North America, let's look at the Mayans, let's look at the Aztecs. Throughout these cultures, necklaces were an integral part of ceremonial attire. But even the commoners wore simple necklaces that, again, would give an idea of status and their beliefs. Next up, let's talk about identity and belonging when wearing necklaces. So wearing a necklace with religious symbolism is a very clear way to say to the world, to say to yourself whenever you look in the mirror, I am a part of this tribe. Now, there are tons of examples out there, but here in the Western world, one of the most common ones we see is the cross. Now, depending on which section of Christianity you ascribe to, maybe you're going to be wearing a crucifix, maybe you're going to be wearing a simple cross. I know people that wear rosaries, other people that wear scapulars. And of course, tons of other religions around the world do the exact same thing. All that being said, you don't have to be religious to wear a necklace that shows identity and standing. In fact, you could be part of a club, you could be part of an organization. And you know, when, again, when I was in the Marine Corps, wearing the dog tags, yes, they had a functional purpose, but I know tons of guys that continue to wear them afterwards because they like to be able to show that they're a veteran, that they were in the military. In fact, I know tons of people that just, you know, they like to wear it because they want to be associated with the military. Next up, let's talk about wearing a necklace for emotional reasons. I'm sure for some of you guys, you've got a chain, you've got a necklace that was passed down to you. Maybe it was something your grandfather bought initially and your father wore, now you're wearing it, but it has an emotional connection. Maybe you're not even a necklace guy, but you wear this on special occasions because it reminds you of where you come from. For other people, it's about their heritage. It's about their emotional connection with, maybe you don't know your father, maybe you never got to meet your grandfather, but you did do a DNA test and you understand where you come from. You know, you come from New Zealand and you connect with some of the tribes over there and you realize that jewelry was huge over in that culture. So you went ahead and crafted a piece that reminds you of where you come from. Now, the emotional connection, I think, has been there since the beginning. People have been wearing necklaces, but I think it was made popular a few hundred years ago, especially during colonial times when we saw the rise of the locket. Now, these were much more popular with women, but you did see men wearing lockets or necklaces that reminded them of a loved one, of someone they were separated from, of somebody that, you know, they just wish they could be with someone they wanted to remember. Now, next up, let's talk about fashion. I know a lot of you guys think, oh, I'm immune from fashion. It has no effect on me. Guys, nobody is immune from fashion. It's very difficult for people to stand out. My point here is if you grow up in a family where all the men wear necklaces, if you grow up in a culture where the majority of men wear necklaces, if you're at a school where it seems like everyone is wearing a necklace, understand that you are more likely to start wearing a necklace. There's nothing bad about this. In fact, it's kind of fun to change things up and it can develop your own personal style, but just be aware that we are affected by our surroundings. Now let's talk about sex appeal and attraction. You look around, the majority of men are, they don't even 
own a necklace. They're not thinking to wear one. They're scared to show it off. So, if you've got the confidence to be able to pull this off, to be able to look good wearing this necklace, you understand a little bit about, you know, aesthetics and we'll get into the details, all the different types of necklaces. Point being, this is a way to peacock. This is a way to stand out from the crowd and to be able to separate yourself from everyone else out there. And maybe it's a great conversation starter. It at least is something, again, to set you apart from the pack. Now, I do need to mention, whether you believe it or not, many people wear necklaces for protective reasons. There are many people that believe amulets, certain uh, stones, and they would truly believe this. And I'm not saying you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong, but just understand that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of necklaces out there that are made to ward away bad spirits or to give you luck. And last but certainly not least, why a man I think should wear a necklace is self expression. And this is going to be a higher level. It's, uh, you know, just I think in the last hundred years that we've really seen this shift of more individualism, again, especially in the West. If you think it looks good on you, again, now I'm thinking of Greg, just, man, it just looked so good. He's an architect. He's a designer. He's someone that cares about the aesthetics and he wore it for himself. When you start wearing things for yourself, all of a sudden, like it just feels good. You almost feel naked without pieces like this. And uh, it becomes part of the, part of who you are. It allows you to express yourself without saying a word. Now, for this next part of the video, I'm going to break out all the different types of necklaces out there. There's quite a few and I'm going to cover them quickly. I'm also going to link to an article down in the description of today's video that is going to go into a lot more detail. Seriously, if you didn't know this, I've got a whole website over at realmenrealstyle.com. You've got quizzes, you've got free eBooks, but I've also got tons of free infographics. So, if you just want to be able to read, go into greater detail, if you ever want to check out the studies that I'm citing, guys, I've got most of it listed over at the website. That being said, if information was power, librarians would rule the world. They don't. Why? Because they don't take action on that information. If you're ready to take action, Jen, you need to check out my style system. I'll link to it down in the description of today's video, but this is my action-oriented course that helps hold you accountable to take the actions. Basically, I take the deep Pareto principle, that 20% that yields you the 80%. Well, I go to the 4%, the 20% of the 20%, and we focus on that 4% that's going to give you the 64% return. Basically, I help you take the actions you need to take over the period of a month so that you can become the best dressed man in the room. First up, we've got collars. These are going to be 12 to 14 inches in length. In case you didn't know, the average neck is about 15 and a half to 16 inches. So, you know, these are fitting really close, if not not tight. So, yeah, unless you've got a really thin neck or you want to wear something tight around the neck, collars aren't going to be for most guys. It's more of a woman's type of necklace, although some guys can pull it off. Next up, let's talk about the choker. In general, chokers are going to be 14 to 16 inches in length. These are going to sit right at the base of the neck and I've seen a lot of guys actually be able to pull off this look. Again, you've got to have, I think, a more muscular build. It's for the guy it really works with and in general, it is a casual or alternative type of style. Next up, we've got the princess from about 18 inches to 20 inches. And despite the name, this is the most common necklace length that men wear. It usually sits just below the throat at the collarbone and it's relatively versatile. Hence why so many guys own a necklace of this length. Now, matinee necklaces are going to be about 22 to 24 inches in length and these are going to sit just above the sternum. Now, matinees are a great choice if you're going to be wearing a pennant, especially one maybe you don't want to show off, something you're going to be wearing under the shirt. Now, in the longer realms, we're going to see the opera and the rope. The opera is going to be about 28 to 30 36 inches in length, while the rope is going to be over 36 inches. Now, this is going to be difficult for a lot of men to pull off unless you are just wearing a statement piece, especially a piece that you're going to wear outside your clothing on top of anything you're wearing. That's when you oftentimes see necklaces of this length. Now, let's get into the different types of chains. So, the most common one we're going to see out there is known as the Cuban chain. Now, Cuban link chains come in a variety of different materials, oftentimes though precious, and they come in a variety of sizes. We're talking from very delicate one millimeter chains to statement pieces, they're going to be two centimeters in size. Most commonly, these chains are going to be between 20 and 30 inches, although you will see them down to 16 inches. You'll see them as long as 30 inches. And as the name implies, these were made popular down in the Miami area, people coming over from Cuba. You saw it in the 1970s and 80s, started popping up in a number of magazines. It has since spread throughout the world. Next up, let's talk about rope chains. Now, rope chains are going to be made from a variety of different materials, gold, silver, platinum, depends on you know how much you want to spend, what you're looking for, the properties that you you want. And the diameter of the rope chain is going to be anywhere from one millimeter to up to five millimeters. Now, rope chains are normally going to be about 16 to 30 inches in length. And believe it or not, the design is really old. It goes back to the Roman Empire. And as the name implies, it's going to be that twisted nature of the metal that gives it a rope-like look 
hence the name. Next up, let's talk about the Figaro chain. Often crafted from gold, silver, stainless steel, the Figaro chain is going to be about 18 to 24 inches in length and the width from about 2 millimeters to up to 10 millimeters in width. And Figaro chains are easy to spot because of their distinctive pattern. They usually got three small circular links followed by a longer oval link. And if you know your history, these come out of Italy and they were named after the opera, The Marriage of Figaro. Next up, let's talk about bead chains. You're going to see these oftentimes with dog tags or on very inexpensive of necklaces. They can be made from, you know, precious materials, but oftentimes they're just made from steel. They come in widths from one millimeter to up to four millimeters, but usually they're going to be pretty thin and the lengths 16 to 30 inches. The design has been around for a long time and it's not just used in necklaces. We also see this functionally used like to turn on like old school lamps and stuff like that. Some other chain styles you're going to see out there are going to be snake chains, which of course, as the name implies, from their smooth scale texture, it resembles a snake's skin. And these chains, believe it or not, have been around for centuries. You're also going to see box chains out there, the size of the link from one millimeter to three millimeters length, about 16 to 30 inches, made from a variety of materials. The box chain is of course named for its boxy appearance. And it may look a bit clunky, but it's actually very strong. And it was one of the favorite chains for penance, anything you didn't want to break off and get lost. And last but not least, let's talk about curb chains. And they typically in length are going to be about 20 to 24 inches and they come in a wide variety of different materials, gold, silver, stainless steel, or platinum. Now, the curb design was initially used for horse bits and these have been around for hundreds of years. That being said, they're not as popular nowadays, but uh, you know, this may be a style that you like and hey, you can rock. Now, at this point, let's talk about pendants. Now, a pendant is the hanging element attached to a necklace. They are not required for a necklace. You've got many people that just wear chains, but oftentimes a pendant is going to be integral to the design of the necklace. And it really allows you to change things up to bring in a wide variety of different things you can't do with the chain, be able to bring in a wide variety of designs or even images. Now, one of the most common types of pendants out there is going to be the locket, not necessarily for men in terms of popularity, who knows it may come back, but lockets, as you can imagine, they open up and they usually have something of value to the wearer. That could be a keepsake. It could be an image. It could be a lock of hair. I mean, do any of you guys remember whenever Angelina Jolie married Billy Bob Thornton? I think they each had a vial of their own blood that they wore as a locket. I mean, yeah, people do some interesting things. Next up, let's talk about religious pendants. So, depending on what religion you're a part of and how you simply want to wear it, I know different countries and different religions have different rules on this, but one of the most common ones, again, we see in the West is going to be Christianity. You're going to see anything from crosses to crucifixes to really intricate designs with, you know, precious stones put into the cross. And by the way, gents, I'm curious about the pendants that you actually wear. Any of you guys out there wearing a religious one that I didn't mention? I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Next up, let's talk about bar pendants and dog tags. Very similar to each other. Often, you know, dog tags going to be associated with the military. The idea was, and we also had one, you had two of them that you were issued. You put one on your boot and you put one around your necklace in case you got the torso blown off. They could at least identify you from your boot. Uh, point being, it was a form of identification. But so many guys get used to this and it becomes an association of who they're part of. They keep wearing them. Other people want to wear them because it was something that their father wore, their grandfather wore, and they want to remember where they come from. Now, bar pennants, very similar, but they are oftentimes have more of a personal association. It really is where a place you can put some information. I know people just want to be able to maybe, uh, they've got a medical condition, so it actually does kind of become a piece of jewelry uh, when they've got that around the neck. And what if you want to wear a necklace that represents a personal hobby, maybe a milestone, represents kind of just something that's important to you. Well, those are going to be known as charm pennants. Now, the design of charm pennants is almost limitless. We see animals, we see letters, we see objects, we see all types of symbolism. It really depends on what you want to do and the limits are your imagination. Now, if you're wanting to show wealth, if you're wanting to show power, if you just want a little bit of bling to draw attention, then in that case, you're going to go with a gemstone pennant. Diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, tons of options here, almost an unlimited number of different cuts. You can go with a wider size, but really in general for men, I'd say keep it relatively small. Now, what about symbol pennants? So, this is going to be, you know, Star of David, peace sign, and you could argue that Star of David is definitely going to be religious, but it, you know, this is if you just want to send a signal. You want to be able to say, hey, this is the message. This is something I believe in. You're also going to see medallion pennants out there, and these are going to be, as the name implies, circular, going to look like a coin. They can be large, they can be small. I've actually thought about taking my challenge coins at Real Men Real Style and turning them into a smaller necklace. But uh, the idea here is to be able to have some information or to be have a symbol that uh, fits right there on a circular or even sometimes square medallion. And of course, let's not forget amulet or talisman pennants. These again are going to be associated with being able to ward off evil spirits, be able to bring the wearer luck. And what's cool about these is there isn't a right or wrong here because I know so many of you guys have different 
cultural backgrounds, you've got different beliefs. So now let's get to the section of how do you wear a necklace and look good. So the first thing I want you to think about is your body size and the proportions and the size of the necklace. Because I get it, that necklace may have emotional meaning to you, but if it's way too large, is this something that's really going to look good on you? I get it, you love it, but you know, that chain may look better just framing it and keeping it in the office. But seriously, gents, if you are a taller, if you're a bigger guy, you can wear larger necklaces. If you're going to be a smaller guy, if you have a more petite frame, then in that case, you definitely want to wear something that's going to work with your body build. Next up, let's look at the outfit. Let's look at the clothing. If you're going to wear really formal clothing, in general, wearing jewelry, especially necklaces, is, is going to bring down the formality. It's going to make it a bit more casual. That being said, again, if you're going out and you've got nothing here on the neck, you want to be able, it's, it's a casual environment, you're meeting up with friends. You want something that's going to help you stand apart from the crowd. There's nothing with wearing maybe a silver, you know, choker just right in here. And next up, let's talk about confidence. So if you're going to be wearing the necklace for the first time, understand you're probably going to be a little bit conscious about it. My recommendation is to wear the necklace around your house, not in front of anybody. Just get used to putting it on the neck. This is the difference between, you know, something be, we think it's uncomfortable, but it's really just we're unfamiliar with wearing it. So you want to put in the reps, just get used to it. Next thing you know, you're going to go to the grocery store. You forgot the chain was there and you're just going to come back. And, you know, no one said it was horrible. No one, maybe you didn't, maybe you did get a positive compliment. Someone said, nice chain. You realized you were wearing it. That's where you want to get to, where you don't even realize that you have the thing on. It just feels good having it there. It becomes second nature. You know, you know, proportionally it's correct. The colors, that's another thing to think about really. Uh, if you are, you know, one thing I, I look at my veins, if you are cool tone, which you should be able to see like a, a green or bluish vein, then I think silver in general is going to look better on you. If you're warmer toned and everything looks red or you're just not seeing that, um, you gravitate towards gold, then wear gold chains. But again, Jets, more important than that is putting in the reps, getting used to wearing something so it becomes second nature because when you are confident, believe it or not, you can pull off almost anything, almost. All right, gentlemen, so if you enjoyed today's video, you are going to love this video right here where I teach you how to stop wearing your polo shirt wrong. Seriously, come on, stop wearing that thing wrong, guys. In this video, I go into details on how to look good wearing a polo. I think you'll enjoy it. It's a good video. Boom. Click on it right here.